Ciao guys and welcome back, it's your friend Luca and in today's video I'm gonna talk about how I filmed that short portrait video that I shared a few weeks ago called The Damned. In reality that day I filmed a couple of BTS with my smartphone but sadly my smartphone died so it's gonna be more a breakdown of what I used talking about gear. I'm gonna talk about the accessories that I used to make that video possible but also about my anamorphic setup. And I know many of you are interested about this anamorphic setup that is uh, pretty minimalist. So let's first talk about the stabilization. I shooted that video for about 80% of the time handheld just with a simple camera strap, a thick one from Peak Design that does a pretty good job to stabilize a navy camera like the S1 with the anamorphic setup. But I've also used my little gimbal, the Ronin RS-C2. It is a pretty strong gimbal. The anamorphic setup is really lightweight, it's less than 2 kg. So this gimbal can do a really good job to stabilize the footage. And as you can see, I have a dual handle because having the anamorphic setup, you want to avoid as much as possible this little swing that you can have when you hold the gimbal just in this way. So with a really tight body. So if you use the gimbal with a dual handle, you're gonna have a more stable footage because you're not gonna have that little swing motion. And considering that I was filming in 6K full frame 3x2 with the Lumix S1, uh, the rolling shutter is pretty high even with the spherical lenses, but when you use anamorphic lenses, the rolling shutter is even more visible. So it is really important to have extremely stable footage. That's why I use this gimbal to stabilize some of the tracking shots I filmed. As you can see, this gimbal has a very nice quick release system. So for example, this is the plate that I use with the spherical lenses with the focus model. I just slide the plate on the gimbal and I'm ready to go. Uh, for spherical lenses, I have like the Manfrotto plate so I can quickly attach and remove the camera in an extremely fast way but for the anamorphic setup I cannot really make the system so high because the gimbal cannot handle that big heavy setup with the center of gravity a little bit higher than normal so for the anamorphic setup I use another plate I'm gonna show you pretty soon because first I want to talk about the light that I used for that video. As you have probably noticed I like to have more a natural look in my videos. I don't really like to have uh, those cinematic and unreal looking images. So I tend to bounce and modify that big and nice uh, free light that is available every day to all of us that it's called sun. And sometimes it's not possible to modify much that big source of light because example here in the Netherlands it's pretty often uh, cloudy and because I like to have high contrast in the videos that I film in that portrait video I just used one small and portable tube light because with those type of lights I work extremely fast and in this case I've used uh, this little uh, Wii light K21 it is a uh, really portable lightweight it has a really nice output of light most of the time I just use at uh, 5% or even 1%. So I simply use this light for the indoor scene where the model Alina was sitting on the chair. I was also using a prop. I was using a lamp that was uh, in that apartment and I was uh, sort of softening a little bit the shades on the face of the model with this uh, little light on a little uh, light stand. So I found these lights extremely usable and convenient because I also like to use props on the location where I film. Now, talking about the anamorphic setup. The anamorphic lens is the ISCO, the ISCO Ultra Star. I have simply glued a 72 to 77 step-up ring. So this is not a permanent solution. If I want, I can easily remove it. But because I only use small and lightweight circular ND filters, this is not a problem, this can uh, easily handle that uh, weight of the circular ND filter. Now, talking about the rear mount, I simply use a clamp made by Rough Camera, 
I don't know if this is the best one or if there are a better solution than what I have. This is what my friends suggested to buy, so that's what I bought. For this model of Isco Ultra Star, I'm not an expert, it's just an Ultra Star Gold and I assume there are also bigger versions of this lens because in reality I ordered the front ring from RAF camera but I bought one that was way too big. So I didn't want to be cheap, I wanted to have like an actual uh, proper mounting option for my filters but I made a mistake when I ordered that uh, adapter so I found this as a temporary solution eventually I will buy the proper ring adapter for the front filter thread so on the back I have uh, the 52.5 millimeter diameter clamp and this is extremely simple system you pretty much attach it to your uh, anamorphic scope So this is the clamp. As a taking lens, as you know, I used the Meyer Optic Gorlix Primoplan 75mm f1.9 with a step-up ring 52 to 55 because the filter thread here is 55mm because I was planning to use this lens mostly with the Leica R 90mm f2 but uh, that lens has a little bit of uh, longitudinal chromatic aberrations I don't really love that so this one is much better lens because it doesn't suffer from those type of chromatic aberrations so the bokeh is always nice and clean and as you can see here on the bottom of this uh, plate I have a little lens support because uh, it is important to have a lens support for your taking lens otherwise you're gonna destroy the helicoid of the lens I know it looks uh, not that safe and not that uh, stable but uh, for me it works extremely well and when I see that this uh, focus ring is extremely smooth like there is nothing uh, putting pressure on the helicoid uh, I know that I'm gonna be good to go without damaging the taking lens so don't use anamorphic scopes like this without support because you're gonna destroy your taking lens I did it for some time with my Canon FD 50mm f1.8 it's still alive but uh, sometimes I hear some weird click and crack as you can see here I have this nice plate that is a DJI Ronin RSC and RS2 compatible plate by small rig I can simply slide the camera in position on the gimbal just have to be sure to take a note about the right position to balance the gimbal and I'm ready to go and in this way I'm gonna have a pretty stable anamorphic uh, setup that is only I think three kilograms in total not even three kilograms so it's extremely lightweight and portable and I don't use external monitor because uh, the screen, the rear screen of the S1 is pretty big and I acquire critical focus with this uh, uh, system and I tend to keep the same distance between me and the talent. Now, talking about the dual focus system, I much prefer to work with a double focus system instead of having a variable diopter because variable diopters are extremely heavy. They're around 500 to 700 grams and when you start to add those uh, grams in front of this uh, lens you will have to use a proper rod system to support the whole uh, system and then you will have to have a stronger gimbal and uh, overall heavier and bigger uh, rig so i prefer to work with this i'm extremely fine with the double focus system because i have a focus marker on the isco and i have placed some marks around the focus scale so 1.5 2 meters 3 meters and 6 meters I always also add marks on the taking lens for example I know that if the primo plan is set at 2 meter I have to set this ultra star at 1.5 meter here and then I lock this and then I know that the subject is gonna be in focus if I have the right distance between me and the subject is extremely simple it takes time to get used but I really love the setup is small lightweight and it provides uh, amazing uh, images as you probably saw so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope this video was uh, helpful and informative I will probably do a follow-up 
in case you have extra question that you can write down in the comment area below but uh, for today this is it thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one ciao